My name is David Price. I'm a veterinarian. I live in Smithfield, Utah, and I'm the president of the Smithfield, Utah South Stake. I want to share with you an experience that shaped my life um, that happened to me as a young veterinarian. I had, had a, only been out of uh, veterinary school a year or so. I started visiting a client named uh, Mr. Lemitz. He was uh, raised in the early 1900s and he had continued as part of a hobby on his farm, farming with a yoke of oxen. He enjoyed the, the oxen, he enjoyed the training, he enjoyed the raising and nurturing. And he'd have me out occasionally to work on those oxen and his other animals. The first time I met with him, he had called me out to work on a young ox that he had just uh, begun breaking to the yoke. Now for you who don't understand what an ox is, an ox is a, um, a steer that has been allowed to grow to full height without being sent to slaughter. Some of these animals are massive. He would take them when they're about a year or two old and begin breaking them. And the way he did that was he kept an old ox named Clyde. Clyde was about 10 years old and had been around with him for many years. Clyde was steady and reliable. He never fought the yoke. He settled in and went to work. And the way he would break these young oxen is he would put them under the yoke and Clyde would take them with him, literally drag them around the field, teaching them how to pull, how to settle in under the yoke, how to be efficient, and how to be a, a, a good farm animal. On occasion, Mr. Lamitz would have me come and treat these young oxen with this pressure sores on their back. And these sores weren't just something little. They were big. They were the size of a dinner plate. You could actually put your fist down into it. And it was all because the yoke would rub the sore on the young ox's back. After a couple of different visits and debriding the wound and wondering uh, why this was all happening, I finally asked Mr. Lemitz, I said, what can we do to prevent this? There's got to be a way to stop this from happening. Maybe we need to get the yoke to fit better. He says, no, that's not the answer. And he said, come with me. I followed him into his barn and there on the wall, were a dozen or more yokes that each one had been handmade, carved, and form-fitted to the yoke that he was training at the time. He says it's not about the yoke fitting, it fits perfectly. It's about whether or not the young ox will allow himself to be yoked. And when they won't allow themselves, they're either half in or half out, but they're never completely under, allowing Clyde to help them. And if it goes on long enough and they won't allow themselves to be yoked, then I have to get rid of them. They have to go to slaughter. They're of no use to me. And then he looked at me and he said, you know, sometimes it's a lot like you and I. We are yoked with the Savior. We are asked to work with him in his vineyard and do his work here on earth. And we have to be all in. We can't be part in, we can't be part out. It's only when we're completely under the yoke that we feel of his strength, we feel of his direction, and we understand the scripture in Matthew. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And from that lesson, I learned that we all end up from time to time with those sores on our back. And those sores are created when we refuse at times to be obedient, to accept counsel. We feel like we can do it on our own. We don't need the help of the Savior. When we change that attitude and allow ourselves to be yoked, to join with Him in the work, settle under it and allow ourselves to feel of his strength that's when we're the happiest that's when we uh, 
get the most accomplished and follow the Savior in His work. And I know that lesson has been with me over the years. And many times in my life, I've had those sores on my back. And it was only through an understanding that the Savior can lighten our burden that I was able to um, feel good about myself, serve my fellow man, and understand my, my reason for being here on earth. And now I'd like to invite you to consider your lives where you at are in service to our members of our stake, to your families, how you're fulfilling your callings and assignments in our stake. I love each one of you. I appreciate all you do and hope that you'll consider this story from time to time when you feel like you're burdened um, beyond that which you can bear and that those burdens are lighter when we allow yourself to be completely yoked with the Savior in His work. It is my testimony that He lives that God loves us all, that the church was restored. We have a great work to perform here in our stake. And I pray every night for each member that will re realize the power that we have in our lives to help others and that the enabling power the Savior through His atonement brings to each of us. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.